Good afternoon. I'm Serena Collado, Director of Community Health at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset. Welcome to today's webinar on Arteriosclerotic Cardiovascular Disease, Find It in Your Heart, presented in collaboration with Friends Health Connection. Throughout the month of February, which is American Heart Month, we are holding a series of webinars focusing on heart health. Today, we will learn more about arteriosclerotic cardiovascular disease, ASCVD, its causes and risk factors, diagnostic and treatment options, as well as prevention strategies. We are joined by our special guest, Dr. Alpesh Patel, a cardiologist with RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group and Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset. We will begin our webinar with 20 minutes of a moderated discussion followed by questions from our audience. So welcome again, Dr. Patel and members of our audience. So Dr. Patel, why don't we begin with you telling the audience a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Uh, my name is Dr. Patel. I work with uh, Rabu Johnson Somerset Hospital. Um, I'm a non-invasive cardiologist. Uh, our uh, specialty uh, in cardiology specialty, there are different specialists. As a non-invasive uh, person, my job is to make sure that my patients don't have to see any other specialties. Um, so uh, we heavily focused on prevention and treatment of heart failure and other arrhythmias as well. So um, I finished my fellowship at University of Buffalo uh, as a non-invasive cardiologist. Prior to that, I did two years of fellowship in uh, imaging. And uh, after that, I was working outside where I was commuting for an hour. And then lo and behold, I found Somerset Hospital 15 minutes away. And here I am. And uh, so I've been here since then. My office is on, uh, in Bridgewater on uh, Route 22. And we also have another office in, uh, in Hillsborough. Well, we're glad to have you and thank you again for joining us today. Um, so let's uh, first, if we can start, can you give the audience an explanation of what arteriosclerosis is and what causes it? Sure. So arteriosclerosis is basically narrowing of the arteries because of plaque. Um, we know that plaque builds up in the coronary arteries as fatty streaks. Uh, we've gone back uh, and looked at patients. Uh, there have been studies done on patients as young as 15, 20, 30 year olds. And almost all of them have tiny fatty streaks. Uh, these streaks over the course of years uh, and because of other factors associated with diet and everything else, we will hopefully we'll talk about, leads to worsening of those streaks. They eventually get bigger and bigger and bigger and they block the arteries. That's basically what atherosclerosis is. Oh, very good. So thank you so much for explaining that to us. So when we talk about arteriosclerotic cardiovascular disease, what conditions are we referring to? Very good question. Essentially, let's think about it this way. It's blockages of your arteries. So when you talk about atherosclerotic disease or cardiovascular disease, it's blockages of the arteries leading to whichever organ, a disease, and whatever organ is getting, the uh, is, is, is getting less blood flow, you get diseases based on that. So in other words, if you have atherosclerotic disease in your kidneys, you get kidney disease. If you have atherosclerotic disease in the heart, you get heart blockages. If you have atherosclerotic disease in the aorta, which is a big pipe that comes out of your heart and gives blood to the rest of the body. If you have atherosclerosis over there, you get atherosclerosis of the aorta and you get aortic aneurysm, aortic, aortic, uh, aortic, uh, aortic diseases. If you have atherosclerosis in the arteries of your legs, you get peripheral artery disease. If you get atherosclerosis in the blood vessels in your brain, or in your neck, you get carotid disease and you have cerebrovascular disease. So it depends on where the mechanism underlying is, what we referred to earlier is the plaque that over the course of years builds up and continues to get worse. And that process is also affected by other factors. A combination of those two leads to 
uh, atherosclerotic disease. Very good. So then what are the risk factors for arteriosclerotic cardiovascular disease? <laughs> it's a risk <laughs> <laughs> So risk factors, the biggest risk factor, I mean, there are multiple risk factors. We had identified ones that are hard risk factors and then the soft risk factors. There are, but the, if the, the biggest risk factor, in my opinion, is lifestyle. It, it, the biggest risk factor happens to be the one that you can actually modify. Lifestyle meaning lack of exercise, poor diet, uh, or it, those two things are the biggest risk factors, in my opinion. In addition, uh, you have uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, history of smoking, uh, those things lead, and high cholesterol, all of these things lead, are the risk factors. These are the hard risk factors. The softer risk factors are, again, genetics, where you're from. Uh, for example, the Asian people have a very high risk of cor uh, uh, coronary artery disease, especially South Asian people, right? So it's, it's where you're from makes a big difference. Uh, Premenopause. Um, metabolic syndrome, a big risk factor. So all these factors add together and create a, a sort of like a profile, so to speak, of you. So what you have is your, your disease process that you have, you have your fatty streaks combined with poor exercise, lack of exercise, poor diet, and all these genetic factors. Together, when you put this whole picture together, you come up with a patient who is predisposed to developing cardiovascular disease. So then how would you calculate somebody's risk for a- so, so, And that is why I said initially, so what we do is that my job is to make sure that they don't have to see my partners, the interventional doctors, right? So um, we have multiple, multiple, multiple risk factors. You can go online and look at it. The one that I like to use is the, the ACC calculator. Uh, but basically what we do is in this calculator, it's an online calculator. Anybody can, can access it and put in their data. You need your lipid profile, you need your age, uh, you know, uh, your certain gen genetic factors, like, you know, what race, uh, what your history of smoking, no smoking, if you're on medications for that, uh, if you're on medications for high blood pressure, if you're deep being treated for cholesterol and your lipid panel, it will come up with a number. Now that number, what it does is that it helps you risk stratify over the next 10 years, what is your probability or what is your risk of developing a cardiovascular disease? Is it low, moderate, or high? You take this number, and then you put it together, again, you look at the patient, you look at the patient's risk factors, you look at the patient's lifestyle, and then you have a discussion with the patient that, you know, listen, this is the risk we have. Let's modify these, let's identify the issues that predisposes you uh, at developing this disease, and let's see if we can modify them, right? Now, if it's the poor diet, let's change the diet. Exercise, let's change the exercise. If your risk is really high, then we go ahead and talk about uh, starting on statins or aspirin or both. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm assuming cholesterol plays a role here. Um, so what is the role and what are the target cholesterol levels that we should strive for? So cholesterol plays a role and it's, it's a very good question. It does play a role, but it's not the only thing. So I do see that my patients, when they come in, they say that my cholesterol is good. Well, yes, but that's just one small piece of the whole puzzle, right? For example, uh, it's what is your diet like? Are you making good choices? And I really happen to have, and I would like to show this. So one is a little block, the name of the company. One is the strawberry soda that my actually, my kids put it on my lunchbox. And the other one, is a cup of tea, right? So what choice do I make? Both of them are sitting on my table. So it's the choices that we make. It's how do we, how much are we exercising? So all those things matter at the same time. So it's not just the cholesterol. Having said that, the total cholesterol less than 200 
and LDL, depending on whether or not you have diabetes, uh, uh, high blood pressure, or you have any kind of fatty streak or evidence of atherosclerosis in anywhere of your body. Okay. Um, so, you know, all right, having said that, you know, I was going to ask you what are the treatment options for high cholesterol, but maybe I should maybe kind of flip that and say, what are the treatments for ASCVD? That's a very, so the, the, so let's take, let me take a step back. Let's talk about a patient, right? Let's say the patient comes in and sees me just so that it's, it's, it's easier for us to understand. A patient comes in, went to a screening, had some plaque or small, mild, minimal, something that they found on the carotid artery. I'm sure a lot of our listeners have gone through that and have had that finding and they come in and, uh, and, and they see me for the first time. That something that they found, while it may be nothing, it's very small, it's minimal, but that's a sign that the patient has already started developing atherosclerosis. The disease process has already taken hold. So those patients are at high risk. So those patients get treated a little bit differently. Then we sit down and talk, listen, is aspirin, are there any other risk factors? No, let's put you on aspirin. Are there any risk factors in, in the on uh, other factors? Let's put you on a statin, right? So that is where it, it, it's a very individualized decision. So just treating the cholesterol is not the answer. I think treating the whole patient with the risk factors is the answer. Does that help answer the yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate that. So you've, you've mentioned lifestyle uh, a number of times, and I just want to kind of clarify a little bit. So what type of lifestyle modifications can people make to prevent, well, again, this line of questioning was on cholesterol, but I'm going to go with ASCVD and plaque right. buildup. So again, for lifestyle, increase physical activity as much as you can. I mean, right now we're going in, we're going through. I, I don't know if you heard about this thing called coronavirus. I don't know. <laughs> no, just just a little <laughs> bit. I've heard about COVID. It. <laughs> <laughs> but you know this COVID thing that's going on. So people are cooped up. They are isolated, and I get it. it. You know, but even while you're at home, find a way to increase your physical activity. Right. I mean go up and down the stairs, walk around the block. It's really cold outside. I get it. But even at home, stay as active as you can. So find a reason to be active at a minimum, right? Now take it a step further. If you can exercise regularly, I tell my patients, that, you know, don't, go, don't set your goal to exercise for an hour a day while you haven't exercised at all. It's just, it won't happen for me. I know that it won't, I won't be able to do it. So unless you're really motivated, set an achievable goal, five minutes, five minutes, that's all. I know it sounds very little, start at five minutes, build up on that. So every couple of days, add more time to it, right? So that that's the lifestyle in terms of choosing the diet. I have a very, my there's so many different diets, I get confused. There's so many different diets. If you if you Google the optimal diet let, uh, guidelines, I think the one that's most uh, uh, studied and the most that's acceptable is the Mediterranean diet. But even besides that, I say if you can cut out all meat if you can. I know it sounds a little bit extreme, but that's what I that my patients when they come in with any kind of if they have diagnosed they have a heart attack or anything at all, my first request is if you can. If you can't cut out all the red meat, right? Increase your fish consumption. Plant-based diet is the best thing, but if you can't follow that, then it's okay. Minimize your meat consumption. Fish intake, plants, plant, uh, plant vegetables, salads, fruits, um, that kind of diet. So diet and exercise is the most important thing that I can focus on. If there's nothing else you take away from this today's lecture, take away one thing, increase physical activity as much as tolerated and diet. Those two important things. Sounds good. Okay. So is, you know, we, we hear people all the time talking about aspirin, aspirin heart, aspirin, you know, so is low dose aspirin therapy still recommended as a form of prevention? Not 
so it, it's, it's a very loaded question. So aspirin is recommended depending on your risk. So we go back to the, cal to the calculator we talked about, uh, the ECC calculator or any other calculator that you, that you can find online. If your risk is high, then yes, aspirin I recommend it. Uh, it so if your risk is low, no. If you don't have any disease at all, for example, women for the longest time, it was said that, you know, women can, they should be on aspirin, then there shouldn't be, then there was a mixed data, all this other stuff. So at this point, I treat the patients based on their risk factors. So that initial visit, the initial assessment of the patient, and if they have a fam strong family history, the cholesterol is very high, they're smokers, they're not actually uh, following a good diet, they don't have any exercise, and uh, based on our calculator and our uh, numbers, the risk is like, very high. Uh, then we say, yes, go ahead and put them on aspirin. Or the same patient that came up with a little, uh, that you know, they found any small signs of atherosclerosis, I put them on aspirin. Okay. But it's a discussion, it's a shared discussion between a physician and a patient, and, 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 and we go from there. Okay, um, thank you. So now, how is arteriosclerosis diagnosed? Uh, very good question. We have tons and tons and tons of ways of diagnosing it. But let's, to, so that we understand this well, let's go back to the beginning of the lecture where we said, you know, number one, it depends the atherosclerosis that the, the atherosclerosis is a disease process that affects different organs in the body mm -hmm. so if it's for example if it's your crowded atherosclerosis we do ultrasound of the heart if the atherosclerosis in your legs we do anti uh, ankle brachial index uh, we can do ultrasound of the legs to see how bad the atherosclerosis is um, we do exercise stress tests to assess if the atherosclerosis is bad enough that warrants intervention. Those are the non-invasive uh, ways of doing this. We can do CAT scans, we can do MRIs. Um, the invasive way of doing it, and uh, that would be uh, cardiac catheterization, where we inject dye into the arteries that we suspect of having a blockage, and we directly visualize and assess how bad is the blockage. Okay. Wow. Okay. Thank you. So now once somebody has been diagnosed with it, what are the treatment options available for people with, you know, plaque buildup in their arteries? Again, first thing that I'll go to is diet and exercise is the first treatment. I'm sorry, but that's the, it's, yeah. it's, I, that is so critically important. And it's so important that if your diet is poor and if you're not feeling well, I'm not sure how much benefit you're gonna get from anything else, right? It's gonna negate everything. So diet and exercise. After that, for the plaque buildup, we have statins. We have cholesterol uh, lowering uh, medications. Aspirin, depending on how bad the blockage is. So let's say the blockage, and we have different ways of looking at this. And let's say in the heart, Everybody, like I said earlier, is that you know is going to have a little bit of some evidence of plaque. That plaque doesn't cause patients to have any symptoms. The plaque doesn't cause patients to have heart attacks when it's little bit. Patients start developing symptoms when this plaque becomes hemodynamically significant, and that happens about seventy to eighty percent. So if it is that reaches that point, then we go ahead and treat it with a stent. Otherwise, we treat it with medications and lifestyle modification and diet and exercise. <laughs> okay, we're all gonna be hitting the gyms. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. So I, uh, at this time, I wanna be able to open it up to questions from our audience. So if members of our audience do have a question, please post them in the chat feature. I will pick them up and ask that of, of our um, position today. Um, so again, just post it in the chat feature. While they are um, uh, posting their questions, um, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, we all, we all want to avoid plaque buildup. And I, I have, you know, people have always said, oh, you know, can you get plaque through your teeth if you don't brush your teeth? Can you get plaque buildup? Um, so what do you say to that? No, you're not going to get plaque buildup in your heart. So if you're brushing your teeth, it's not going to come loose and then go to your coronary arteries and build up over there. No. 
Uh, having said that, uh, proper dental hygiene is important. Poor dental hygiene is associated with increased inflammation. And I'll take a step back and take you back to what we when we talked about, uh, we said that what affects uh, plaque buildup atherosclerosis. What makes atherosclerosis worse, regardless anywhere it's in your body, is those other factors, um, that factors such as increased inflammation. So yes, brushing your teeth is very important. And besides, I don't know, I've had my share of the dentist. I, I, yeah, well, I'll end it at there. Well, no, thank you for debunking that myth. I, I hear it all the time. You would be amazed um, how many times I hear that within, um, from the community. So I figured, you know, let me ask it. So we are getting a few questions in. Um, so with our first um, question is, should a person that has diabetes see a heart doctor? Uh, the question should be, I will, I will, I will tell the, uh, the, the person that the question you should be asking is that, should, if you have diabetes, should you be getting assessed for your risk of developing a heart disease? And the answer is absolutely yes, absolutely, 100%. So you should go through the calculator, sit down with your doctor and go through the calculator, come up with your risk profile, look at your personal, your, what your risk factors are, and then identify those and go from there. Yes, absolutely. So the answer is yes. Sounds good. Um, so how much magnesium do you recommend for heart health? And are there any natural ways to lower LDL without statins? Uh, sure. I love the last question. I'll answer the first question first is that magnesium, I, for my patients who have AFib or any kind of arrhythmias, I give them 400 milligrams of magnesium over the counter. The natural way, I love that question, is again, diet and exercise very critically important. So your diet, if you follow a completely plant-based diet, right? If you get your proteins just from the plant-based uh, foods, that is the biggest thing you can do, right? You can take fish oil on top of that. There's a, I mean, I'm sure some of our uh, viewers have heard of a SIPA. You can take that. Um, you can take uh, over the counter fish oil supplements, uh, but those are the, the most important things. Good. So now what form of magnesium, uh, glycinate or citrate? Anything you can find over the counter. Okay. Anything. There's no specific, rec there's no specific recommendation as far as I'm aware. No. Okay. Sounds good. So another question for, um, regarding ASCVD. So are there any conditions, medical conditions that predispose somebody to a SCBD or yes. Uh, oh, go ahead. Answer that one first. No, no, no. Please go ahead. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, no, no. Answer that one first. So yes, chronic inflammatory disease processes will increase your risk of having this metabolic syndrome, which is uh, just borderline diabetes, being obese, all these things will increase your risk. Absolutely. And then does um, arteriosclerotic cardiovascular disease increase your risks for other medical complications? Uh, absolutely. Uh, and then if so, what are they? So I think, a, so atherosclerosis, if I'm understanding the question correctly, or, or the, what the viewer is asking is that because you have atherosclerosis, other than what you get in the heart, what else do you get? Or what other diseases do you get? Uh, yes stroke, vision problems, chronic kidney disease, peripheral artery disease, blockages in the blood supply going to your gut, uh, or causing abdominal pains, all these things. It depends on where the blockage is. But yes, you get that absolutely, without a doubt. Okay. So what is the significance of mild arteriosclerosis in the aorta? You, in my personal opinion, it's huge because that already means that the disease process has taken hold. We have progressed and graduated from mild fatty streaks to plaque buildup. So they are at a high risk of developing cardiac disease, developing a heart attack, uh, having blockages in the heart. This is a systemic process. In other words, if you have blockages in one part of the heart, or, sorry, one part of the body, you're going to have blockages in other parts of the body as well. Uh, 
So it should be treated aggressively in the sense, again, risk factors, aspirin and, and statin if, uh, if uh, applicable, and uh, look for any, and I said, screen the patient for peripheral artery disease or CVs or anything like that. Okay. And um, for exercise, you mentioned, um, you know, that exercise is important. So is walking enough? Um, um, walking is, so walking is good. It's very good. But okay. why do something good if you can do something better? <laughs> so walking's, walking's so, fine, but you say you Walking is fine. It's excellent, stretch right? Stretch yourself it's, a little bit. Exactly. Little so if, it, it depends on the patient's aid, patient's uh, uh, capability. So if you can walk, that's fantastic. Very good. Do it. But if you can run, why walk? <laughs> right. Okay. So if you so that, that's, uh, that's what I'm trying to say is that if you want to get your heart rate, increase your heart rate as much as you can uh, while you're ex exercising. So if you can do biking, if you can uh, uh, if you can do bicycling, or if you can walk or run on a treadmill or a brisk walk, that's fine. That's fantastic. It's good. But the simple walk that uh, my wife is going to kill me, that she does when she takes the dog, walks the dog, and the dog, you know, it stops like every couple of seconds, the dog stops, so you stop, and then you look around, admire the weather, and then again, you go for a couple of feet, and then you say, that's not walking. Yeah. That's not, that doesn't count as, uh, as your exercise, no. All right. So I want to be mindful of time. We have a few more questions. Um, so uh, this um, audience member tried red meat um, with the diet, but uh, ended up being anemic. So what is the best way to handle plant-based diet without becoming anemic? So are there iron supplements, right? Uh, I, and I'm, I'm not going to, so it depends on your age. What is the cause of anemia? I mean, how bad was the anemia? Was there any underlying uh, disease process if the patient is 70 year old and develops anemia? I mean, before you, you sure you can blame it on the on your diet and anything, but before that, you gotta absolutely must talk to your primary care doctor and rule out other disease processes, right? Um, Plant-based diet alone, if it causes anemia, you can take iron supplementation. So you can take other supplements, yes. Okay. So how often would a CAT scan or a PET scan be done to monitor arteriosclerosis in the aorta? No, no, so no, no. Is it just, so if you have, it depends on the disease process. In general, if the question is that, uh, should I just go to the doctor, primary care doctor, and ask them that can you just CAT scan my whole body and look for atherosclerosis? No, absolutely not. There's nothing, no imaging is gonna replace a one-to-one -one conversation with your physician and screening. It's just very simple. So sit down with your doctor, describe the symptoms, let the doctor assess you, ask you questions, see, assess, assess you as a patient, as your whole, and then come up with a plan. And it's, there is no recommendation that just directly, let's just go get a CAT scan or MRI or anything at all. No. Okay. So next one is kind of a, um, a situational type question. So this viewer's dad died of diffuse arterial sclerosis at the age of 62. Um, the viewer is now 76 years old, female, exercises every day, and averages 6 million steps every year. Does not eat meat and basically follows a plant-based diet, but not is not vegan. Um, her cholesterol is 255, but the LDL is 114, um, and wants to know what else can be done. They, doesn't want to be on statins. So what are your thoughts about red yeast rice supplements? I, I, I absolutely I recommend that to all my patients. When I, when I recommend my patients to go on statin and they don't want to take the statin, that's my first question is, would you mind taking fish oil supplements or red yeast rice? So absolutely, yes. The answer is yes, do that. Okay, very good. Um, so that looks like all the questions for today. So um, you, that this will actually conclude today's webinar and we hope you all enjoyed it. And if you do um, have enjoyed this webinar, we will be offering a webinar on um, what becomes of the broken hearted, which is about broken hearted uh, disease on uh, February 18th from six to seven. So uh, if you're interested, you can log on to the hospital's website for more information. So Dr. Patel, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate all the information you've given us.
Um, uh, to our audience, again, thank you. And please remember that the opinions expressed here by our medical experts are not a substitute for medical advice from your own physician. If you need a physician, please call our physician referral line at 1-888-724-7123. And again, for more information about Robert Wood Johnson Somerset, visit our website at www.rwjbh.org backslash Somerset. Thank you again. Be well, be safe, and have a great day. Take care, Thank everybody. You.